Hello everyone, I am the Killer Gamer. Welcome to another retro flight. Um like to call them short flights, but uh <laughs> maybe uh quick and short flights or like uh, whatever flights I tend to come up with. But anyway, this is Flight Simulator 5.1 and might help if I click on it here. So that way you can kind of hear stuff. So, we're going to be flying Lufthansa, and this uh, particular plane here is included in the Apollo collection, uh, which is uh, in the uh, expansions that you see uh, below me. One of them is um, the, Air the, Airbus, the Airbus collection, which is uh, collection number one from... Uh, Apollo. Um, I've got one and four. Um, I am trying to get my hands on two and three. Uh, so if you happen to have those or know someone who does, uh, who would uh, like to part with them, uh, please let me know. I am very interested because I would love to do some videos uh, with those planes because uh, I can use that uh, for here for Flight Simulator 5 and I think I think I should be able to use them on Flight Simulator 95 with the, um, I think it's the, like the Flight Shop Converter or something, so I, I should be able to, I, in other words, I'll be able to make use of a lot of those planes, um, and especially uh, doing these short flights, um, you know, where there's no particular pattern or any type of route that we're going on, uh, they're just random, random flights. Uh, gives me a chance to uh, do a lot of different things with uh, a lot of different planes. So, so yeah, if you know anyone uh, who has the Apollo Collection 2 and 3, please let me know. Um, I am interested. Uh, as well as uh, Europe 3. Now, we're using Europe 1 and 2 on this. Again, those uh, little thumbnails are, are down below in my picture. Uh, there is a Europe 3. I've never seen it, uh, but it, I've seen it reviewed. It was on a, uh, was it Flysome.com or something? But I was able to find a review of Europe 3, but I've never actually seen it for sale. And I'm looking all over for it. Maybe it was going to be released and maybe it never was. I, I don't know. Um, I have a thumbnail for the, uh, for the cover. But I haven't seen it, so I don't know. <clears throat> anyway, so we are here at Frankfurt, Frankfurt, Germany. And this is with the Europe One uh, software. So here is the uh, book for that. I got the boxes and stuff over to the side here. Uh, now I've created a flight plan. <laughs> let's uh, let's get inside the uh, the plane here. There we go. So I've created a flight plan, and let me show you exactly how uh, this works here. Uh, let's see here. Okay. So what you're looking at here, this is from a program called Shirati, um, uh, Shirati Commander Flight Zone. Uh, I don't have the thumbnail down there because, well, I'm not using it through the whole flight, but it's this right here. Okay. Now, if you like doing some retro flight simming, I highly, highly recommend that you get this expansion because what this will do is it will scan your database for all of your scenery BGL files, uh, whether it's paid scenery or uh, downloaded scenery from, um, uh, you know, cus custom scenery. It will scan all that and then it will put it, you'll be able to load it up on, on the world map and you'll be able to get... Uh, You'll be able to see all the VORs, all the ILSs, all the NDBs, all the airports, 
et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you can do a uh, you can do a flight plan on it. Um, you can't like import it into anything, but you know, like making an adventure. But what you can do is uh, it, you can do an outer router where you put in two airports. It will find a route in between. Uh, and then you can kind of go in there and adjust a little bit if you need to, which is kind of what we did here. So if we go down, uh, do this, this is all done with, um, I took screenshots and I put them all into paint and just put it all together. So that's, that's, that's what you're seeing here. So uh, the, this flight plan right here, this is the list of everything. So it gives me the names uh, of the different uh, VORs that I uh, clicked. These are the frequencies. Here's the northeast coordinates of them. And this is the, uh, the radial that we would need to go on to get to it. Um, or we could just tune it in. Uh, but in case we're not close to one, um, and that's fine. But this also tells you how many miles apart they are. Here's the biggest one right here. 115 everything else is like 40 50 miles uh, average Ooh, that one's big um, these up here I just copied and pasted these are the uh, ATIS radios and this down here is the ILS so this is ILS for runway 18 runway 32 and runway uh, 4 or 5 I'm not sure which one that's going to be but I wrote all those down or wrote them I copied and pasted them here for reference so that way I can easily look it up. And that's the great thing um, about about this program right here. Uh, it, it pulls up all that stuff from your BGO files. And uh, you can also create scenery, add scenery. It's very basic, but if you wanted to go to, you know, one of the default airports and just add a few little things, that does it. That, that'll do it for you. If you want to do more complicated stuff, um, then you might want to get another program. But if you're just wanting to add just a little extra something, um, you know, this is the, the thing that you uh, would want to get. So I've got this here set uh, to Rammstein. <laughs> um, no, not the rock group. It's interesting that there's a board called Rammstein. It's only got one M in it. Uh, but this is, this is Ram, Rammstein, and this one here is going to be Grosten Quinn. which is not tuned in yet. Uh, we'll switch over to VOR number one. To do that, we have to use shift and tab. That switches to ADF. And there we go. So, just go ahead and change our heading here. According to the flight plan, it said on 5-1. No, not 5-1, sorry. <laughs> That's how many miles away it is. 2.30. The ATC chatter is from a, another add-on called Real ATC. Um, that thumbnail is also below. And although they never mention it, uh, you can go in and replace the wave files with your own wave files. You have to convert them to a certain wave format, 8 bit, um, like 88 megahertz quality. Otherwise, it doesn't sound right. But yeah, you can go in there and completely replace them. But you have to find out which ones they are and then rename them and everything else. But uh, I've got a collection uh, that I've been using and uh, putting together, putting together in, into sets and uh, that way I can interchange them and have a variety of different types of air chatter. And in some cases, local uh, air chatter too. Oh, so here's another thing uh, that you can do with this. You can print out an airport, or the airport diagram, the diagram for the airport. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty useful. 
able to create my own adventures, I could put uh, voices and everything else uh, uh, in there to really make it a, a, a fun, interactive uh, flight. That's why I want to be able to get that thing fully working. It takes work uh, on putting together those adventures, but it's, it really makes it nice and immersive. Thank you very much. I take the 
The scenery on Europe uh, 1 and 2 is just really uh, pretty neat. So I think I'm going to take us up to about 11,000. Level off there. This is where keeping the previous VOR tuned in will be useful because according to the flight plan, our next VOR is 48 miles away. So if we switch over to VOR 2, we're now from, so when that gets closer to 48, uh, we'll know uh, that we're getting close to the VOR that doesn't have a DME apparently. So we have a small capture of default scenery, but it looks like we've got, I think we're going from Europe 1 to Europe 2, uh, as far as scenery over here. That's definitely not default scenery right there, because <laughs> it looks nicer than this. But it's still okay. I mean, you know, it doesn't look horrible or anything. Okay. Yeah, 
5890 contact center 125. show you the approach here. We're going to land at uh, runway 18. And if I show this to you here, this is from the actual uh, scenery. That is the VOR that we're tuning into right there. Oops. <laughs> that is the ILS going to the runway. So the ILS uh, is 109.3. So we're going to go ahead and set this to 109.3. Oh, I'm going the airport's right over here. Thank you. 
Well, it doesn't seem to be lining us up really well. Okay, I don't know what it's doing, but... Would have been, but that stupid autopilot. I think I see a terminal that's not being used. This is cool. This is the first scenery that I've seen that actually has uh, the little walkways. I've not seen that in other 
scenery, so it's kind of cool. Park on this end of it. Okay, traffic keeps here, Mike. We're just south of the American Camp, south of the shoreline. We're going to keep us down. Find the people from the south. We're going to get a point track. Off your left side. We're turning uh, the plane off and disembarking the passengers. So we are here. Uh, we are here at Madrid, Madrid, Spain.